Hi, this is Jason with Violet Comics Collectibles coming at you with another toy review. This time we're taking a look at the Dick Tracy Itchy figure from the Dick Tracy toy line from Playmates Toys from 1990. So the first thing we're going to do is take a closer look at the figure. So taking a look at Itchy, so obviously this is one of the, the bad guys from the Dick Tracy movie, and it does a fairly good job uh, interpreting what Itchy looked like, more in the colors of what he's wearing than anything else, and like the glasses and stuff like that. Out of all the characters, you know, they, they all seem to have over-the-top facial features. They're just absolutely, you know, ridiculously over-the-top with the brow, with the big wrinkles in his forehead, shoulders, the emphasized shoulders, rodent with his rodent-y looking face, influence with that almost like weird kind of prune face looking you know face the a flat top the way he looks and prune face and itchy in the movie was probably the most normal looking guy i mean obviously his name's itchy and they do show that in the movie where he's scratching but the toy like kind of overemphasizes that with like scratches and stuff like that not what i'm assuming would be like battle damage like the bullet holes that some of the other characters have in their hats and then like flat tops have has in his shoulder but you can see that throughout the toy with there's scratch marks all over him, you know, on his legs. You know, he's got his uh, one of his suspenders uh, ripped open with a scratch mark by it, you know, just to kind of overemphasize his name, which is cool. It gives it a lot of personality, but I mean, as far as these over the top figures are, it's probably the, the farthest figure from, you know, the actual movie character in the way he looks, other than the coloration and, and the hair color and the glasses. But, you know, still a good looking figure. So, I mean, take a look at articulation. You know, his head turns. It is kind of restricted by the collar. You can rotate it all the way around, but you risk damaging the figure. His arm does move up and down. He rotates just behind his little cuff, which does have a little cuff link right here on both the arms. And then he has this ball style joint leg, which you can do all kinds of different articulated moments with this guy. So fairly decent with articulation. Now as far as accessories, he does come with three accessories. He comes with a lead pipe just like the rodent does and he comes with essentially the same um, you know, Tommy gun as the rodent does. That thinner style, more traditional looking Tommy gun which looks really great. One thing that this figure sets apart from the whole of the toy line, you know, they have ammo belts and gun belts. He's the only one that has a grenade belt which is pretty unique and it does look really cool on him. And it, is, it cannot go over his shoulders that I can really fit it. I feel like I'd damage it by stretching it to get it to kind of go over his shoulders like some of the ammo belts can on some of the other figures. You know, some of the gun belts and they actually have like two different little spots. You can actually make it, it makes it a little bit bigger so you can make it wrap around his shoulders. This guy doesn't have that. It's very, very tight on his waist that you can see. But it looks really good. As far as the, you know, the outfit, I think it looks good. His tie looks disheveled like he's been scratching. He's got those scratch marks on him, you know, the, on his shoulder, on his legs, you know, that ripped uh, suspender. And it looks really good. And going on to the back, you can see his suspenders crossed over on the back. So, I mean, overall looks pretty good for this guy. I mean, he's also got some of the blandest shoes. He's got the black shoes. They are molded to look like a, a style of a penny loafer type dress shoe but not as good and like two-toned as some of the other ones that really give it that flashy gangster style look. But let's take a closer look at this guy. 
Here you can see Itchy's face, and you can see he's got his, his uh, blue hat on. It does have an orange band that goes all the way around. It's just that the angle is kind of hard to see, but it's got that fedora-style look. He's got his glasses, and, you know, he's got overemphasized facial features and the way his nose is. And like I said, Itchy was probably the most normal-looking guy in the movie, but pretty decent for this style, over-the-top, you know, ridiculously emphasized features toy line. And here's his midsection that shows the suspenders like they're being stretched and the one that's ripped up close. You see his arm slash and you can see his legs with the cuts on there. And then like I said, that, that ammo, uh, not the ammo belt, the grenade belt is a really cool looking touch on this guy. I think, you know, this is the only figure that comes with this belt, so I think it's really nice. And then we get a good look at that standard style Tommy gun, which just looks better than the other one by far. The other one's bulky and just looks more over the top than anything. This looks more like what they use in the movies. And obviously it looks like a real one. And then you have that bar that looks pretty good. I mean, it's got that little uh, ripples on it, like it can be screwed into something and it's kind of bent. Just same exact bar that does come with the rodent. So I mean, as far as accessories, pretty nice. His ammo belt is the best thing on him though. Like I said, his shoes are just a bland black. Uh, they do have, you know, different little features into them, like the way his toe is right at the toe. I think it, you know, it looks nice for a shoe, but it's not as nice looking as some of the other ones that really stand out with that two-tone color that kind of matches their outfit. And here we have Itchy next to Big Boy from the Dick Tracy toy line as well as Raphael from the Ninja Turtle toy line. Obviously these toys were made by the same manufacturer Playmates toys. Uh, the Dick Tracy ones came out in the uh, 1990 and then the Ninja Turtles one came out in you know 1988 and they were definitely banking off that style. They were trying to keep that same style you know, the overemphasized size. You can see even the way the legs are bent, they were definitely going for that same uh, style. And even as far as articulation is pretty pretty much similar. You know, you know, the Ninja Turtles were huge when they came out. When the original cartoon came out, they were just going crazy. I remember these things were like really hard to find. Everybody had Ninja Turtles. So Playmates was really hoping that this toy line would sell. And unfortunately it didn't, which is really, really sad. Because like I said, I really love this toy line. I love the gangster style, the the weapons, the over-the-top look, I think they are fantastic and they're really colorful looking figures. You know, it's one of the un most unfortunate things is this toy line has one of the more rare figures, you know, released uh, the blank and what happened with that was the blank actually has a, a plot feature that if they would have released it when the toy line came out, it would have given away a very big point in the movie, being that the blank in the movie is uh, breathless, which is not the case in the comps at all. The uh, blank is somebody totally different. So they decided to hold off on that, and unfortunately when the, the toy sales declined, a lot of the toy stores weren't going to purchase more stuff, so they never really sent any of the blanks to the United States. So they had tons of them, and what they decided to do is they basically sent them to like Sears, and I think like one other store in Canada, and there's some other places in other countries they went to, um, and they basically had it as an exclusive to Sears. There was a mail away where you could get the blank, you could mail away for it, but you just didn't see that toy and if you ever see pictures of the blank pictures like in the packaging because it was you know in Canada and they, they had that that dual uh, uh, language on it so you know it was in uh, two different languages on the packaging which you know that was in like in Canada with there was a lot of you know French speaking people and French Canadians and stuff so you'll see that that dual packaging you do uh, dual writing on the packaging now there are some uh, blank packaging that you will see with just um, you know, you know, English, and that's it. And those were really rare. Those are typically just production samples. They are very, very hard to find. The blank is extremely hard to find, extremely expensive, looking at 600 to 1,000 or more. You know, the lower scale being one that's out of package and, you know, 1,000 to 1,200 for one in package. And if you found one with that didn't have that dual language on it, um, you'd probably be looking at, you know, way more than that. I don't even know if I could put a, a number on that one, but... Which is unfortunate for people trying to collect this whole series. It's almost, you know, impossible. These figures you can get pretty cheap. You can find these figures from from three dollars all the way up to ten dollars to four, you know, fourteen, fifteen dollars in package, brand new, and some of them even cheaper, like brand new in package, mint condition, unpunched cards. You're looking at five dollars on eBay. But I mean, the blank is absolutely it's an astronomical price difference you compared to these guys, which is really unfortunate. And it's a really cool looking figure, and it's the only figure with a trench coat, which is one of the things that Dick Tracy should have had to actually have that that iconic looking yellow coat. But the blank does not have any articulation in his legs, so that's probably the only reason why I think that Dick Tracy doesn't have his actual coat because it would interfere with the articulation. It's just molded into the coat for the blank. So blank only has arm articulation and the wrist articulation and, and head articulation. But 
like I said, Itchy's a very good figure. Not one of my favorites, but it is a very colorful and very, you know, over-the-top looking figure. And once again, this has been Jason with Violet Comics Collectibles. If you liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and I'll see you guys next time.